Hi everyone, it's Hannah from Hannah's Decodes and today I thought I would talk a little bit about um, exiting, die, dying, a, a good way to exit the life here and you can describe it as dying or passing over or however you'd like to. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I learned in Buddhism many, many years ago about a good death. And uh, it's essentially um, with keeping your focus within your heart as you're going through that process when, you, when you're still alive but you, your, your body's slowing down and exiting and you're um, perhaps losing some consciousness and if you can keep returning to the heart center, that is the place I'm told that is the key to having a choice. And as I understand about where you you um, go to. So my understanding is you your body kind of shuts down, but the consciousness can, if it can, be in the heart and. When you're um, a Buddhist monk who's practiced meditation for most of their lives, they they can do this really well. For for everyone else, it's probably very very fast. And but they they can do a very slow and conscious um, kind of let it, uh, how do you describe it? Slow and conscious focus on, on the heart and, and not the rest of the body and not the external world. And much much more difficult when you're when you haven't done that kind of lifetime of meditation, but you can still be conscious of your heart center and focusing on that. And so I um there's a nice meditation which isn't particularly a Buddhist meditation, but it's about <clears throat> your consciousness being aware and expanding hugely outside of your body and your heart and becoming this giant universe and then bring that gently back into your heart like a little speck of light. So I thought um, after I talk about this, that might be quite a nice thing to do. So um, so, so that's my, my understanding is that that method gives choices and this this is my feeling not so much about buddhism as well but once you're in that heart state and your consciousness leaves your body or your soul whatever you like to call it once that leaves your body you have a choice to sort of join the kind of great creative universe and, and you become that and then you have multiple choices that we can't comprehend being here on the planet and I think that's something you know when I exit one day I would like to have as many choices and knowledge as I possibly can and there's another avenue that um, people often talk about and that is following the light when you exit and uh, I've heard so much from Buddhism but from other people and avenues who feel they have knowledge about it and it resonates a little bit with me is often when you follow the light it's some people describe it as a manipulation but a, or a, a, a trick or something but I see it as like a choice you can kind of stay in the heart and rise above this kind of light that you see or you can go down the, the channel or the path of this bright light and often people describe that or their um, relatives and family members and stuff are there and it's it's like a reunion. And my feeling is that that's okay if you want to do that, but that's, if you do do that, that ensures that you come back to the three-dimensional, some people say we're in four dimensions now, I don't know, come back to this planet Earth and you go through a cycle of karmic relationships with a whole lot of people that you've probably already done that with many, many times. So I would like, if I exit, to have a choice of coming back if I want to or not, or perhaps 
finding into other adventures or like or things to do. And it doesn't matter if you don't believe in this, it's just a little bit of knowledge that I don't think is uh, th this kind of exiting is talked about at all. So I, I find, and in Buddhism, exiting is is kind of a, a important practice in life so that your next life is a good life. So a good exit is a good is for the the next life or the next reincarnation can have many many benefits. So um, I I actually can remember talking to a friend once, and he said he can remember lining up and also almost being like outside a door, but in in a queue. And he knew he was lining up and waiting to be delivered as a soul spark to his parents, obviously, when they were conceiving him. So that's kind of interesting. And, and this person isn't, it was surprising to hear this story from this person. Um, so anyway, that's all, I've written some notes down. Yes, I've got the light. Um, another thing I was going to talk about when people are at the end of their lives and about to exit and even pets, it's so important for the people around them to be in a balanced kind of emotional state because subconsciously people can pick up your fear or your attachment and, I mean, this is much easier, I think, with older people and old pets or whatever, but when it's a young person, that's, that's a really difficult kind of thing to do, but just something to be a little bit thoughtful about. I can remember um, over the years my family, my, my kids, we, when my, a pet would die, I'd have a little chat and say, um, you know, you don't have to come to the vet when they, they put the dog to sleep you can stay home and say goodbye here if you feel it's going to be really really upsetting and it's probably good to try and keep calm and just remember we don't want um our dog to be in a fearful state while it's you know after it has its injection and it's leaving you don't want it to be picking up on our on our fear so you just go in there and although you might be a little bit teary you just you're patting them and telling them they're good and you know and saying goodbye in a, in a really positive way if you can. So that's another little tip and also works extremely well with people. I mean, I think often when people are exiting, they um, it can it can often take them a little bit longer if they feel that there's these all these emotional pulls and tugs and ties, sort of people not wanting them to go ha hanging on. So I just thought that was another little thing to mention. What else? Um, obviously, the falling on the light was a space. Okay, so I just thought what, what, what might be nice would be to do this little heart meditation. And this is not just for exiting. It's a great uh, meditation to have or feel what it's like and to get an essence of what it's like to remember our expansiveness as a soul kind of consciousness. And although that we're, we're in this little human body and some people say your soul resides in your body and other people say your body resides in your soul because your soul is so huge and expansive, it can't possibly fit into your body. So it's just um, a, a nice meditation to remind us of how expansive our consciousness and soul essence is so I thought it might be nice to do and it's something um I've done a little bit lately and would like to do it a little bit more because it's, it's quite good and a nice reminder of our expansiveness okay so if you want to get your feet on the ground flat on the ground hands on your lap, palm up if that's comfortable, taking some really nice, deep, gentle belly breaths. And at the same time, filling your body up with the love. Imagine all this 
light love coming in through your nose or if your mouth, breathe in your mouth. Filling your whole body up. Right down to your toes and fingertips. Now gently take your consciousness down to your heart center. Let it reside there, your consciousness, your mindfulness for a moment. And as you breathe in, imagine your consciousness expanding, filling up the whole room you're in. And then with the next breath, the whole house or building you're in. And then with the next breath, the whole suburb. Then the whole, whole city. And imagine your consciousness expanding out covering the whole country you reside in. And your whole consciousness expanding and covering the whole planet. And then expand past the planet, filling up our whole universe. And then beyond our, beyond our universe, to fill up all universes. Fill up all space with your consciousness. And take a moment to realize space never ends as your consciousness never ends. Consciousness can stretch forever. Okay, now bring all that expansive consciousness back into your heart center. Yeah, floating back it can be really quickly or as fast as you want. It's in your heart centers now, the size of a tiny atom. This atom is ex it can be as expansive as all the universes and space you filled. It can also 
be seen as filters, minute and minuscule. Both the expansive and the minute are relative to one another. If you want to, you can do that a number of times, however many times you like. That's just a really nice way of reminding ourselves of our consciousness and how it can touch everything. Um, yeah, so just come back to your body, through your toes and fingers. And I think that's it for today. Okay, until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye.